Alright guys, well, I'm pretty excited because I finally received my enclosure. If you remember a while back, I think it was the middle of August, I had went over to the sheet metal shop, my local sheet metal shop, and asked if they could give me a quote on this. Uh, he came back with a quote that was very, very reasonable for the amount of work and material that's involved, so I just put it in their hands and let them take care of it. Uh, this is not the way I normally do it, but I didn't have the brake and the tooling to actually bend all these big pieces, so I just decided to let them do it. But if you'll remember, this is the way that the enclosure looked when we drew it up. I did make a couple of little minor changes. Um, let's take a look quickly at that. On the pan here, I welded a one inch piece of tubing to the bottom of the pan and that will be to connect up my drain, like this. And it may seem small, but you got to remember this pan is pretty large, it's 10 by 15, so uh, it's going to collect a lot of uh, liquid and I think it will be, uh, be just fine. Another thing that I did here was I had them fabricate these sheet metal brackets and then I just later tacked them on and the pan just slides in and out or the tray slides in and out on those uh, brackets. So the way this pan works is this right hand side here is one inch higher in the back right corner and it tilts towards the center and then this piece tilts from the back right hand corner towards the drain and then the left hand side is one inch higher on the far left edge and it tilts towards the center so hopefully we'll have uh, good drainage you can kind of see how it tilts there and here you can kind of see how it tilts so this compound angle was a little tricky um, but they were able to uh, figure it out without too much trouble. I will be adding some plexiglass doors here once I get it in place. But now let's go out and uh, take a look at some of the photos I shot while we were doing the finished fabrication on this, priming it and painting it. So let's take a look. Hey guys, well we started out here with putting it up on the stand and just kind of going over all the seams and welds and doing any touching up that we felt like was needed uh, on the seams. We then did some grinding and cleaning it up best we could. Um, we didn't get it completely perfect and flat. I mean it's not a paint job for a car. We just wanted to make sure everything was um, sealed up good. Uh, you can see here the tray. And these are the sheet metal brackets that I had the sheet metal guy fabricate. And then we just kind of tacked them on the side here, as you can see. Now on the bottom here is a eighth inch thick uh, flat bar. It's one inch wide. And that was to reinforce the drain cutout. You can see here the uh, pan in place fits real nice. And then we started fabric. Uh, putting the side panels on in the back, drilling the holes, um, clamping it together and drilling the holes for bolting it together. Um, it wasn't a perfect fit. We had to do some tweaking to get it to everything to work, but overall it turned out real nice. And then we welded some hinges. Uh, onto the each door. Now these hinges uh, will allow the door to lift off completely. And again we just kind of tack these on. Uh, we're welding to sheet metal here so we didn't want to go all the way around. We just put about three tacks on each hinge. And then of course we put the doors on and again there was a little tweaking you know just to get it 
the hinges and everything to line up so that it opened up real nice as you see uh, and again we just did the same thing just tacked the hinge on to the side panels after we did that we also added some I took some three-quarter inch EMT and flattened the ends and then made some corner bracing and that's it and we took it over to uh, the garage and my dad has a it set up for painting and we hung all the panels up wiped them all down cleaned them off and uh, got everything ready to start putting on the primer it's nice to be able to hang all the panels up and then that way you can just do them all in one session uh, I'm actually doing two enclosures here one for me and one for Chad so there was a lot of sheet metal to cover here uh, you can see the pans the trays there with the uh, bungs welded onto them for the drain and uh, let's get ready to put some primer on here now we're using uh, epoxy primer here and this happens to be uh, a brand that we get from Napa Auto Parts and uh, my father-in-law he there he goes he's spraying the primer on there uh, this is some nasty stuff he uses a fresh air respirator that he has uh, built himself and uh, you can see we got the uh, primer coat on there looks really good now we let this primer dry for 24 hours uh, and then after it was dry uh, he went back double checked everything did some light sanding and then the next day he came back and put the color coat on now for the color I chose to use white paint and this is oil based enamel and I picked this up at my local tractor supply it's a magic brand farm and implement paint and uh, I read good things about this on different forums and saying that it would hold it really well so we went ahead and used this we did add a reducer and a hardener to it finally I got it back to the, my garage and uh, started to make sure that all the panels that we had previously fit once they were painted they all went together and so I started assembly uh, this here is an inner tube from a bicycle and I just cut some uh, one inch by inch and a half rectangles folded it in half and punched a hole in it with a hole punch and then I used this as gasket material for the side panels where the bolt holes went through so that everything would seal up nice I also uh, installed some bumpers some rubber bumpers on the bottom of the door just drilled a hole in there this is just a quarter inch hole and then the bumper just kind of popped in there and this just kind of keeps the door from rattling and it actually does a really good job of keeping it in place um, so when the door is closed it just sits nicely down on this lip and keeps it closed nicely uh, here you can see the tray in there those went in really nice and then with the tray closed uh, from the inside you can see how the drains going to look now I purchased some uh, perforated screen and the perforations on this are 1 16th of an inch really small and I think that'll catch most of the particles before they go into the coolant tank uh, you can see with the doors open we have 58 inches uh, added some a little the uh, Precision Matthew 727M in on low there and also the CNC for XR7 alright so here's where we're at so far on the enclosure as you can see it's turned out pretty good so far um, there's still quite a bit a uh, couple of things that I gotta finish up before uh, it's actually done uh, I've got to move it into place but before I do that I gotta clear out an area uh, there is going to be a couple of plexiglass doors that go into this center section that will open up and I'm not going to put those in until I actually get it in position get the weight of the mill on there so that I can get the plexiglass level 
uh, so everything closes nice. Uh, the center section there is 27 inches, so that gives me 27 inches of clearance to get in there and work. Um, that should be good for everyday machining. When I need to get in there and do some clean out or have complete access to the mill, these side panels lift up and swing open and allow full access. And that gives me 58 inches of access uh, to do any kind of cleaning or working on the machine, whatever I need to do. A couple of features that um, I've already talked about in the design phase, but now that they're completed, let's talk about those. The tray. We have this tray here at the bottom, and this is for clean out. I've got a stainless steel mesh screen here that just lifts out. Uh, these are 16 inch holes and that should count, uh, that should take care of all the uh, big stuff from getting into my coolant. The design of the pan is one inch higher up on the side and it tilts down towards the middle for drainage. And then in this corner, uh, it tilts down this way, in this direction, and tilts down this way towards the drain. Uh, so that back corner there is one inch higher than here and here. So hopefully, uh, you know, everything looks good when you design things on paper, but in reality, you don't really know until you do it. But it looks like everything's going to... Uh, allow the coolant to flow towards the drain. Uh, so we'll see once we get it all set up, but uh, I think we'll be just fine. Looks pretty good. Um, the pan has this lip all the way around, and so this allows all the coolant to stay in. Anything that gets splashed up on the walls will just drain down. Um, where the panels meet the pan, what I did was I just took a piece of uh, inner tube and a hole punch, I cut a square off rectangle, folded it in half, hole punched it, and then stuck the bolt through to uh, bolt it down. And so that made sort of a gasket and that seals everything. I'm using a uh, half inch quarter 20 bolts to bolt everything together. So hopefully everything will stay sealed, sealed up. I still need to cut me a hole here uh, for all my wiring, and I'll probably situate that directly behind the column. So before I get the meal in, I'll have to definitely cut me out a access hole. Uh, another thing too is I put these cross braces up here to give it a little stability. Because this is the open design, uh, these side panels tend to be a little flexible but the bracing up there uh, helps out a lot also on the bottom here i put these little rubber feet and that helps once it that helps keep the door from pushing in keeps it uh, in position so that's real nice but you can see it's a little flexible, but not too bad with the cross brace. And then with the doors in place and the rubber feet, it's pretty sturdy. Now one thing I noticed when I was building this and doing some grinding, we had to kind of put it together before and assemble it before we did any priming and painting. Uh, we had to do some finish welding and grinding. It's very loud when you're inside there trying to grind. So I know that once the meal gets in there and you actually start cutting, it's gonna be like a megaphone inside there. So what I'm going to do is, and this is something that I intended on doing from the beginning, but these are 
a three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is just get me some foam uh, insulation board. I'll buy some three quarter inch and then cut the panels and fill these panels in with some foam insulation. And then that should help deaden some of the noise and sound that you get, that tinny sound. So hopefully that'll work out really well. Uh, this drawer, the nice thing about this drawer is it comes out. So now you can take this out, you can stick a bucket up under here. When you need to do a clean out, you can stick a bucket under here, lift your screen up, and just scoop everything down into here, into a, a bucket or box or whatever you use to put your chips in. I put some rubber edging. Put some rubber edging on this sheet metal brackets here. Uh, let me show you these brackets. These, uh, all these are just some L brackets, and I just tacked them on the bottom there. And a stop, folded a little stop in the back here. Just some sheet metal brackets, and those, uh, the sheet metal guy formed those up for me. And then I, uh, took this to my dad's shop, and we welded these on, and finished welding these on. But you can see with the rubber on there. Now what the rubber does is it keeps keeps the tray from vibrating. And also kind of lifts it up. Because you can see there's not much gap between the top of the tray. And the bottom of the enclosure. So that should work out really well. Be mounting some uh, drawer slides over here, and then the plexiglass will come together in the center here. So that's the enclosure so far. Uh, now I've got to clear out an area and get this enclosure moved in position, uh, get it on the stand, and then we'll set the meal on there. And then we'll work on the plexiglass doors and we should be done uh, and ready for some machining. If you want the plans for the enclosure, I'll uh, put a Dropbox link in this video. So that wraps up this video. Uh, we're 95% done with the enclosure. We just got to move it and get it into position. Uh, if you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to comment. Thumbs up if you like the video, please subscribe, thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.